Hello. So for the first project, what you're going to be doing is um, analyzing this repository of history to um, uh, changes to a program that counts words. And uh, what you're going to do is analyze each different version and check things like, well, when you run it, does it produce the output or is it buggy? Um, and then among those versions that are correct, um, how fast do they run, right? So across some versions, people are optimizing uh, the performance. And so we've talked a whole bunch about Git now, um, how we can kind of switch to different versions of, of, um, of code in a project. And I want to talk about the other two pieces that are going to be really important for this. How can we write a notebook or a Python program that runs other programs? That's the first part. And then the second part is how can we uh, measure how long it takes to um, run those programs or, or maybe even just a snippet of code? Okay, so we're going to start with this first piece. How can we run um, a program? And so we can do that with a, a module called subprocess. And uh, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to say from subprocess import check output. And check output is this function in the subprocess module um, that will run a program and then give us back um, the output from that. So let, let's head over to the terminal. And in the terminal, where is my terminal? Let me sshn. In, in the terminal, for example, I could run a program like pwd to figure out what directory I'm currently in. pwd, and it says, okay, this is the directory we're in. Um, when I ssh this virtual machine, notice that I'm also um, running Jupyter Notebooks on that machine, right? So if I somehow use this function to run pwd from my notebook, I'm really running it on this virtual machine that I've SSH to. And so really when I run it, I should get the same, same output. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say check output and I'm gonna pass in pwd. I'm gonna do that. And I see that I got something similar to over here. I mean, it's a little bit different because I'm in a different directory, right? I mean, if I had, that same place where my notebook lives, run PWD, I, I'm, I'm getting basically the same, the same output. And, and you notice that it looks a little bit like a string, right? Um, I have my quotes here, uh, but it's also a little bit funny, right? I have this B in front of it. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture this output in a variable from running the PWD program. And, uh, and let's look at what the, I mean, you know, just show it here. Let's look at what the type of this thing is. If I look at type of output, it turns out it's this thing uh, called bytes. And bytes is a new kind of sequence, right? So um, maybe let me just make a note of this here for you. So um, there's types of sequences. Um, one is that we could have a list, which is really a sequence of anything. Um, we could have strings, which are a sequence of characters. And then three, we have these uh, bytes, which are a sequence of, well, bytes. And bytes can be used to represent anything. Um, bytes could be used to represent um, characters, for example, and that's what's happening here. Um, it could also be used to represent points in an image file, right? If I want to describe, describe say, a JPEG image, uh, bytes might, might do that. So bytes could represent lots of different things. And, um, and when I run programs, the outputs of those programs might be in different formats. So often it'll be a string, but not, that's not guaranteed. And so what I want to do is I want to take this byte sequence and convert it to um, a string sequence. So I can use it just like a regular string. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, I want to convert my output to a string. And, and that's not quite what I want, right? I mean, that's just kind of uh, doing a programmer's representation. What I really want to do is I want to specify what my encoding is because <clears throat> like we talked about in the first lecture, um, you know, I can represent strings using bytes uh, with an encoding table and the encoding table says which numbers uh, represent which characters. And so on Linux, the default is generally UTF-8 as well as on Macs. And so if I do that, I get a nice regular string right like that and and I could print it off if I wanted to and um and, and it's just like a normal string right so I can do that that's how I can convert a bytes to a string 
with a specific coding. And, and since we're using Linux, it's trying to be UTF-8. <coughs> so let, let's try something else. Um, sometimes what we might want to do is we might want to check what version of a program we have. So if I head back here, well, if I run git, there's a bunch of stuff. But if I say git dash dash version, I can see that I'm on version 2.17.1. Uh, can we get this string uh, into my Jupyter Notebook so that I could really figure out what version of git is installed? And so I'm going to try that. I'm going to say um, check output. Check output. And I'm just going to copy this command directly that I ran, the git dash version like so, and it turns out that I have a, a problem. And, and the problem is that it's looking for a program named git space dash dash version. And there is no program with that name. The only program I have on my computer is git. And so what I really want to do is I want to run git and then pass um, this as an argument, command line argument, to the git program. Okay, so. Uh, this is bad, right? This this is not going to work. There are two ways to do this. One is that I can say, well, I can do it the same way, but I can tell the check output function that I want it to act like a shell, right? Remember, this is a shell over here. It's a bash shell. And when I type things in the shell, it's smart enough to figure out that this is the program and, and these are the arguments. And so if I type that over here as well, it'll figure out that, um, that I want to do that. Now, another way, and, and really kind of the better style, is that I could pass in a list. And the way the list works is like this. I have the program name, and then I have arg1, and then I have arg2, and so on and so forth. And so how would that work here? Well, I would say you get, and dash dash version, and then I would do exactly the same output. And, and for a lot of the things we're using, it doesn't really matter. Um, in certain uh, other applications, or maybe, maybe I'm like making like a web application or something, um, there's certain cases where this would be more secure, kind of safer to run, uh, but I'm not gonna get into that now, right? So so I'll kind of choose either of these for, for what you're doing. Um, okay, so let me see here. Um, sorry, I just need to flip in my notes. Um, so that was the first piece, right? The, the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about how we can uh, measure how long it takes to run something, right? So that's the second piece that we're going to need for the project. And we can do that with time, the time module. And the time module has a function in it called time, right? So the time function is inside of the time module. And what this is returning is how many seconds since January 1st, 1970. And so if I keep running it, you can kind of see that if you look at this, these smallest numbers, if I keep running it, that time is kind of ticking up one second at a time. And so if I want to run some code, um, what I can do is I can actually kind of take what time it is and put that in a variable and then do something and then take a time measurement again and then what I can do is I can see how much time elapsed. This should be how much time it took to do, do something here. Okay. And so, well, let me just do that. You can see it's a very small number. And you can see there's some amount of error here, right? Just from the time to here to here takes some time, even though I'm not really doing anything there. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually convert this to, I'm going to convert this to, let's say, microseconds. So if I multiply by uh, 1,000, 1,000, which I could actually write as this, that would get me to um, milliseconds. If I do this, I get microseconds. So this is a millionth of a, of a second, right? So I'm going to just say microseconds. So I guess it takes about you know 24 microseconds to just call this. And then there's a lot of noise there if I run it a bunch of times. Now, if I actually do something here, like, well, let's say x equals 5, you see that's very fast, right? That didn't change it much. If I actually do something like print hello, turns out that printing is kind of a slow thing to do. Um, now I'm taking, well, really over a millisecond, right? I guess I could draw back to multiplying by a thousand. And now I'm in terms of 
of milliseconds, right? And so printing is kind of a slow thing relative to putting something um, in a variable. Um, so before, um, we talked about um, kind of operating on lists and, and doing things at either the beginning or the end of a list. And so let's try this. I'm going to create a new list, which will be, um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to take a range of numbers from zero to a thousand and convert that to a list. Okay, so I have that big list of numbers. And, um, and so I'm going to do that. And now that I have that, I'm actually going to, let's make like a million numbers. And uh, what I want to do is I want to see, well, how long does it take to check if something is in side of that list, right? So I'm going to say something like, um, you know, is five in that list? And, um, and well, let's see how long that takes. I'm going to go back to microseconds this time. I'm going to go back to microseconds, which is a millionth of a second. And, um, and so I can do that. And that's kind of, uh, you know, it's a noisy number, right? But I can see that's well, not taking too long. Now, how does this work? Um, even though this is one line of code, inside of Python, this acts like a loop. I mean, it's looping over all of these million items and seeing, well, is the first item five? Is the second item five? Is the third item five? And so what's going to actually happen is if I get a much bigger number, it's going to take much longer to find, right? And if I can have a middle number, let's say like um, uh, 500,000, it's going to take about half that, right? So since it's looping over until it finds it, then um, kind of like the bigger, the farther along it is in the less longer it'll take. And really, if I try something like, you know, negative two is not there, that's going to be just as long as checking the last item, right? Because I have to go over everything, loop over everything before I find it. Um, now, one of the things that we're going to want to do to get more stable um, measurements is don't just run this once. You can see it's varying a lot each time. It's pretty noisy. Um, so what we'll actually do is we'll take like a sample size, and let's say I want to do this like a thousand, we'll say a hundred times. What I might do is I might just have a loop like this for i and range of sample size. I'm going to run this thing. And then when I'm all done here at the end, what I really did is I, I well, I kind of did this operation um, 100 times. And so what I want to do is I actually want to divide that by how many times I did it, right? If I did 100 times, I'm going to get the average. Right, so I can do that. And that takes longer to measure, but you can see that the numbers are much more stable um, each time I do that. And that's going to be especially important when I have something like this that's relatively fast, right? You can see this a little bit noisier. If I'm doing something fast, then to avoid the, the kind of the damage of making these extra calls or the noise of that, I might have to do it more times to get a stable um, measurement. So what you're going to be doing in the project is combining this, right? You're going to have things like this that measure performance. And then inside of here for your, you know, do something, what you're going to do is call check output, right? And that way you can measure how long it takes to run a program.